Good evening, Dr. Reese, students, uh, anybody that's watching this. So, it is week eight of the course, and uh, we are to discuss two of any of the number of questions that were in this week's uh, final assignment. So, for my final assignment, I chose to discuss the knowledge of results, knowledge of performance, proprioception, and then the degrees of freedom. And for the degrees of freedom, I chose golf because uh, it's one of the biggest things that I enjoy doing. And I think from a motor learning perspective, it allows me to like fully explain all of the different stages of learning and then how the degrees of freedom uh, correlate to that. So uh, without further ado, starting with the knowledge of results. Uh, so knowledge of results is very much so after the uh, individual placing well in whatever it is that they're doing. So again, sticking with the golf um, example. So knowledge of results would be focusing on placing, you know, top three in uh, in a competition. So if it's you know the individual playing against other individuals, or if you're a member of a team and you're playing against other teams, um, it's about knowing where you place accordingly. Also with that, there's a number of things in a golf match, typically like a four-person scramble, that gives you the, the knowledge of results. So you can see like closest to the pin um, on you know, most, most par threes, uh, longest drive, um, things of that nature. So that lets you know like where you stand in a field of other uh, athletes, or in this case, golfers. So then moving into um, the knowledge of performance. So knowledge of performance is about how you perform, right? That's in the definition, but um, how you perform in an aspect of the event. So for this, you know, playing golf. So when you go out and you practice, it's keeping track of how, you, how well you perform in one particular aspect. So it's either driving, uh, from a tee box, it's your iron shots, your chipping, putting, um, any one of those one aspects where you're not so concerned with the end result being, you know, I shot a 72 um, and I part out every single hole, but you're more concerned with how well you did in putting, right? So you're just focused on that one aspect and that's why it's you know, crucial during the practice part of the game is focusing on your performance where you're not concerned with how you end up or what you end up shooting, but it's about how well you do in that one aspect, uh, which is kind of different from the you know knowledge of results. So the way that I explain it, um, I guess from a coaching perspective, is that the knowledge of results is more focused on the extrinsic motivation and the knowledge of performance is more so intrinsic. So uh, knowledge of results is extrinsic because you're focused on outside motivation. You're trying to get a medal place in the top three. You're trying to beat other people. Uh, whereas the knowledge of performance is more so it's me versus me. How well can I do in one aspect of the game? Um, so that's my, uh, my take on knowledge of performance and knowledge of results. And then proprioception. Uh, proprioception is basically understanding how your body is moving um, in the space around you. So it's using all of the senses that you have. So obviously your, you know, your vision, smell, hearing, um, anything that allows you to understand where it is you are in space as it relates to what's around you. So the example that I used for my paper was basketball. Um, so for basketball, as you know, the point guard dribbling up the court, you have to understand where you are, where your defender is, where you're trying to go, and what your defender is essentially going to do um, in reaction to what it is that you do. So you have to understand where your foot is going to strike. If you do a crossover, how far are you going to cross over? How is your foot gonna hit? And then allow you to move for that next step. Um, if you do a spin, you know, you have to understand where you are, where the defender is, and how you're going to then attack the rim, essentially, um, to try to score or pass the ball. It's understanding everything that's happening around you in real time. And then 
it's split second decision making um, where you perform an action, the defender reacts, and you have to know where everything is in order for you to make that next move. So um, that's to me basically what uh, proprioception is. So now moving into the, the final piece where I get to serve as a, uh, my own actor, I guess. So for degrees of freedom, um, you know, during the, the initial uh, instruction phase, uh, when you're actually in the cognitive stage of learning, uh, typically an athlete is relatively stiff, especially in this, um, in this mode or in this you know, event or activity. So in golf, um, there are tons of degrees of freedom. That's a, one of the reasons why I wanted to choose this. So um, when you look at it, you know, essentially this four iron that I have here becomes an extension of you. Uh, so as you look at how you address, right, typically um, junior golfers that don't have a lot of experience seem very, very stiff throughout everything because they're trying to lock up or freeze as many of the degrees of freedom as they can uh, so that, you know, they don't go outside of their typical swing path. And then as they progress in athletic ability and understanding of the degrees of freedom, they're then able to uh, utilize more of these degrees of freedom to enhance basically their ability to strike the ball. Um, so when you watch a junior golfer or in the cognitive stage of learning, uh, when they address, and uh, I'll back up a little bit so you can see me here, hopefully I'm not hitting stuff behind me, but uh, so when they address, they're looking at the hands, right? So in the hands, you have multiple degrees of freedom. You have a degree of freedom in every single joint in the finger, every joint in the hand, and then when you move down to the wrist, right, you have degrees of freedom that can move this way, and then you have degrees of freedom that can move like this. So typically what you'll see in a, uh, in a junior golfer, or, uh, an apprentice, if you will, um, where everything is very, very stiff, locked up very tight, and when they swing, uh, what tends to happen is all of their movement is very strict. Um, it is very, uh, I guess, limited. So what will tend to happen is they'll go, they'll take uh, from the address, they'll start the back swing. Everything will be very, very straight as normal. And then they will get closer and closer to the top, allow those wrists to break essentially, hit parallel or go beyond depending on range of motion. And then when they swing back through, the wrists reset very early. And then when they swing through, everything is still very much so locked up. And then all the way through to the end, right? So it's very, very strict. Um, it looks almost robotic. And as they progress in ability level, you'll start to see they'll break those hands a little bit earlier at the wrist to allow more momentum going back. It frees up their hips. Uh, so that they can start the weight transfer because if you're going to get the, the true um, potential out of your swing, you have to have all of these different degrees of freedom uh, working synergistically. But when they're first starting out, um, this is not the case. So what tends to happen is they're very, very restricted and it looks something like this. I'll try to do it, but I've, I've been playing for a long time. So, so they'll, they'll dress and then everything will be very, very strict, and they'll come through. So it's a lot more limited than as you progress. So as you progress, you start to learn how to incorporate each of the degrees of freedom, and you're less restricted uh, in your movement. So the weight transfer goes from uh, re relatively center when you address, and, <clears throat> and then you'll see I'll shift the weight behind me to allow that swing to go. And then my hips will open, allowing that transverse rotation uh, so that I can maximize my power because a lot of the power comes from the hips. And this is where uh, novice golfers don't really understand it. They don't know, like, well, I'm swinging as hard as I can. Well, you're not using your entire body. Um, and that's one of the things, like, from a teaching aspect of the importance of degrees of freedom. So, um, as you'll see, my hands will, uh, well, my wrists will break a little earlier. And in the previous one, my swing will be a lot more fluid because I know how to get my body to move throughout all of the different planes of movement and of like opt 
optimize my degrees of freedom in order to swing through and generate the most power. So uh, this swing should look a little more rhythmic and a lot more free. So uh, we'll see y'all address. And so all the way through back swing, my wrists open up a little bit more. The reason that I do this is because I've been playing for a really long time. I know how to set my wrists to come across clean at the impact, square the club face. Um, I, my hips move or rock slightly so that the weight transfers back to my back or trail foot. Um, I rotate all the way around to get as much power as possible. And this kind of takes the club on a different uh, swing path and then it allows me to come down in my downswing, uh, come all the way through, square up that club face right at the end, and then the follow through piece. Uh, so you'll see a lot of, now most golfers are very restricted on their follow through because they're restricted on their backswing. Uh, whereas I swing all the way through, come all the way across, wind up as parallel as possible, and then I watch the shot um, as it shakes down on the field. So, uh, but that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I do want to tell you thank you for understanding everything that's happened over the course of um, you know this class. It's been a rather trying time for me, um, and I appreciate you understanding. Everybody else that's watching, um, thanks for everything throughout the course. Thank you for your responses. I learned a lot from each and every one of you, um, and I wish you the best in all of your future classes. So uh, stay safe and uh, take care.